The first role models I had were in cartoons, particularly anything to do with magic. Could it be that one day I'd have a wand that could summon my TV remote? Could it be that one day I'd understand what it takes to get to the vast cosmos? I love science. To analyze from multiple perspectives, to understand the patterns and rules of what's going on underneath, the ability to discover and find out you were wrong. But getting into STEM and staying can be hard. The scientific community is still filled with historic inequities and inequalities. It can be hierarchical and often unwelcoming to people that are different. It requires persistence. With every challenge I've faced, I've become a more creative problem solver, more patient with myself and with others. I enjoy representing a figure that many from my demographic are told is not possible. But for many like me, it takes extra perseverance to get here, often feeling we don't fit with what being a scientist means and what it should look like. Social pressures dictating what women and people of colour can and should do start to set in further reinforced by not having role models as young people to help them believe they belong in science. It's easy to feel discouraged if you don't have a supportive community. And it's hard to have that community if your classes are made up of people who are very different from you. It's a perpetuating cycle. They choose another career and the cycle continues. It requires conscious and continued effort among faculty and leadership and courage and dedication among students to change this. Diversity is getting invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Success in science isn't only publishing a paper or making a discovery. Success in science is as simple as learning something new. And learning works by making mistakes, which means it's time for STEM to learn from and overcome its mistakes. Does hearing all of that sound familiar to you? Because up until this question, every single word I've said today was spoken by you. Not too long ago, I asked the scientific community for mentorship with the question, can I be a scientist and can I still be me? Incredibly, scientists all over the world responded, mentoring me through the various challenges I faced as a young girl with a passion for science, growing up into the woman standing before you today. I was truly blown away. Now, Emotionally, most people's immediate response was to say, yes, you can be a scientist and be true to yourself. But those same people were actually quite split when asked if diversity and inclusion is taken seriously in science. Two thirds of men felt that diversity and inclusion was taken seriously. And worryingly, only half of women felt the same way. As my story has unfolded, the practical answer to whether I could be a scientist and look like, talk like, and simply be me, was a different story. We all know the first principles of our jobs as scientists are to ask questions investigate every angle and uh, unlock answers. So the bigger question is, why aren't we? Right now, for the first time, 
by listening to your unique perspectives, we have an opportunity to gain some perspective on our own industry, an opportunity to approach science with true orthogonality, speaking from one collective, inclusive and diverse voice. This isn't my talk. This is your talk. I'm Grace, but this is our story. When asked if they could go back in time and start again, many of my mentors acknowledged their difficult journey, the times they nearly gave up, how much they've overcome and learned. But despite that, 90% said yes, they would still pursue a career as a scientist. And interestingly, of the remaining 10% who said no, the majority felt that diversity and inclusion wasn't taken seriously in science. Science is tough. Perhaps not for everyone, but everyone should have an equal chance to succeed. More than a fifth of my mentors didn't know that when it comes to securing funding, black applicants already have an uphill battle significantly less likely to succeed than white applicants. In these situations, we often only have one shot at success. And it was all of you who told me the best ways to succeed. Give the facts and connect data back to the overarching goal. Show passion for your proposal. State the impact it will have on real people. Don't ask for money. Tell them why they should care and make these crucial changes. Okay, you'll probably need to ask for money too. <laughs> so, I did exactly as you said. I gathered data and evidence from all corners of the scientific community and with it established a hypothesis for change. If STEM actively pursues diverse perspectives, extraordinary success will follow. So, how do we pursue diverse perspectives? If change is our desired outcome, then mentorship is our catalyst for change. Scientists, it's your job to make yourself and your institutions available. Reach out to universities, target the schools in your community that are likely to be under-resourced. Show all young people a more engaging pathway into science. And mentoring doesn't just apply to your students. Your colleagues might be facing challenges too. Remember when you were the newbie who didn't know how to speak up in meetings, or when you tried and tried but you couldn't get a word in anyway. Every person in STEM should strive to be a better ally, someone who advocates, listens, and recognizes value. Teachers, you were mentioned by over a third of my mentors. Your role in achieving change is hard to overstate. It's down to you to facilitate mentorship, keep an open mind to your students' differences. Equal opportunities are great, but equity is better. Ask yourself, would you recognize bias if you saw it in your colleagues? What about in yourself? Introducing a student to the right mentor could make all the difference for those already struggling with belonging. That brings us to our next point. The less we identify and react to bias, the more momentum it gains, ultimately preventing change in STEM. When I experienced gender bias in the classroom, 99% of my mentors told me to address the problem head on. So, I called it out and found a solution. Sounds easy, right? Well, in the lab, when we conduct experiments, eliminating bias is necessary. Yet, outside the lab, that is just not realistic. But we can lessen the impact of bias by conducting ourselves with awareness and educating ourselves, peers, and colleagues through giving and accepting constructive feedback. 
This can be as simple as correcting a colleague who is continuously pronouncing another colleague's name wrong. It's a small change for you with a huge impact for others, creating a more welcoming environment where everyone feels valued. Journals and publications. You keep the STEM community connected, but in doing so, set the standards. Does your institution challenge itself to monitor and improve on bias? Does it promote diverse viewpoints as well as fair and impartial writing? We need to rewrite the industry standards. Which brings us to our third and final point, and it's on you, leaders. Recognizing the responsibility to your people. The most effective way to achieve change is to build opportunity into the DNA of our work environment. The opportunity for your employees to be the best that they can be. The opportunity for them to speak honestly and be themselves. This hasn't been the reality for 65% of my mentors and their careers. Often feeling overlooked on projects or promotions without substantial or fair reasoning. If you're a great leader, you prioritize all your people. You help them achieve their ambitions equally and not just those who are similar to you. You'll introduce training and development initiatives, especially for those who haven't had a dedicated support system before. Great leaders also support opportunities to be more than just one thing. Understanding that life has many variables. How many of us are given the space to be sad as well as happy? To become new parents, to be colorful, to live the many extraordinary facets of our identities. STEM needs everything you are. Your bold hairstyles, embarrassing laughs and your huge smiles, your clumsiness, favorite trivia, useful or not, all of your experiences, whatever they may be. You all said that I can be a scientist and still be me. But how many people like me has science lost without mentors to guide them? How many Nobel Prize winners? How many vaccines, cures and breakthroughs were missed out on because one closed-minded comment turned someone brilliant away from science. The change hypothesis isn't a corporate slogan or a bandwagon movement. It's a hypothesis you created. Over 1,000 of you mentored me, scientists from an incredibly diverse array of backgrounds, to conclude that diversity makes STEM better. So, are you ready to prove it? Thank you.